December 2022, Texas freeze has come and gone. How did our DIY RV skirting hold up? How did other RVers come through it? And what were the most common mistakes several made that had water issues, even with electric hoses? Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. And we made it through Storm Elliot, another winter storm. It's a one in a generation storm, we're told. We've <laughs> been living through several of those in our generation. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't the ice and snow and bitter cold that hit us in Texas in February of 21. In that storm, there were hundreds of people that lost their lives, and it was a very, very, very serious storm because the, the whole Texas energy grid failed. This time, we had a few power outages throughout the state, but it was nothing like it was in 21. No. Thank God. <laughs> Before we go into how our, our DIY skirting held up. We're going to let you know about a few extra things that we ended up having to do that were not in the last video and what some other people here in the park did as well. Some people winterized their RVs and left. Hmm. They weren't going to deal with it. I think they'd been through it before too. They had family or friends in the area and they just left. Some were brand new. I think also they didn't have a clue what to do and just chose the easier option. And in that regard, some of them hired a company to come in and winterize their RV for them. Some people left when their water froze, and we're going to get to that in a little bit. Most people in this RV park live in their RVs full time, but many of them are not used to living without all the bells and whistles. <laughs> They're not used to being without power or without or knowing what to do without full hookup they they live full time in the rv but they don't necessarily know how to live in an rv <laughs> okay the neighbor over there looks like they put up some kind of a board on one side you can see the like a foam board of some kind Oh, they're coming out there. See me film them. <laughs> um, the one down there is the one that I just, oh my gosh, they must really be getting hit. And they don't have anything around theirs. This is what the neighbor next door to us did with the foam board all the way around. I've mentioned these in previous videos. These are the insulated curtains that I made. They were ready-made insulated drapes, and I just made them into curtains that covered all three windows in the living room and dining area. And uh, after the sun went down, these came down too. I didn't mention this in the previous video, but I have in other videos. Um, we put a blanket over our door and we hang that up on colder nights. It's just a regular blanket folded in half, it has a hem at the top, a big heavy hem, and I just hang it off of a tension rod. And that really knocks a lot of the cold that might be coming through the door too. In the bathroom, underneath this, in this cabinet here, underneath is blowing a lot of cold air, even though we insulated that area on the outside with this is where the outdoor shower is and there's a lot of cold air coming in through here right now so Gary's gonna try and insulate this a little better this is the Insultec and it's not real heavy or anything it's pretty lightweight but it does really break a lot of the cold so he's gonna stick that in there there you can see the extra insulation Gary put in there we didn't need some of this before, but it's because of the wind coming and hitting us from that side that's making it more necessary this time than in the past. The same thing in the kitchen. Uh, as I talked about in our last video, we, we have the, the cupboard door open that for under the sink 
because of the pipes way in the back there, they're right against the wall, but there's places where those pipes go that we can't reach. And part of that is um, behind the um, control panel down here, which was making a lot of noise for a while this morning, and then we added some air flow in there, and that's helped, and now the noise went away. We also opened this drawer to um, get some air circulating back in there behind the drawer. And if need be, we'll take the drawer out completely. And it also goes all behind the couch, underneath, on the floor, against the wall, up to the bathroom. With two space heaters running and the furnace just kicked off, and we are about 62 degrees in here. And this I never thought I would see in Texas to be in the dry part for humidity. So we brought out something we used when we were in Nevada, a little baby humidifier. That's the last thing you think you want to have in an RV, but right now that humidity will make it feel a little warmer in here. Good grief. This was after the storm. This held pretty good. On the really, really windy day, the the tires were, you could see the shape of the tires because it was pushing against it so much. But yeah, not too bad. Gary moved our part of our deck over here to hold it down on that side. Yeah. So, all in all, I think it uh, did well. This is a digital space heater. And we used this for the kitchen and living room area. And it oscillates. When the power went out, even though it was for like less than a minute, it tripped the space heater and it wouldn't come back on when the electricity came back on. So you got to really watch out for that. We found out that some people only use space heaters and they never use their furnace. There was a, a guy in a, in a class A uh, who was just across from us, he said he didn't even have propane in his tank at all. He just was relying on his space heaters, which works out fine if it isn't real cold and if the power doesn't go out. But he was able to use his generator if that happened, so he, he kind of had a backup. But he also said it got down to about 45 degrees in his coach overnight. Yeah, and that's with a Class A, which are much better insulated. Having your furnace at least ready in case you need it is a good idea. But the other thing that the furnace does is it keeps the floor warm, so it'll keep things that are underneath your floor that you don't see that need to stay warm. <laughs> it helps with that too. We will use our space heaters at night, but we prefer that our furnace is running at night because there's been a lot of people that have had fires caused by space heaters. And so if we're gonna rely on extra heat, I would prefer to use the furnace. The extra advantage is that if the power goes out, the furnace will still keep running on the battery, whereas the electric heaters, they just go out. Yep. In addition to making sure heat got to everything underneath here, the other thing that's under here, that's the, the white thing there, that's our hot water heater. And this is our fresh water tank. Goes all the way from underneath the sink, underneath the cupboards. This cupboard door is open right now. And then behind the bench seat is storage. 
and under the storage and behind here is the, the rest of the water tank. It goes across this whole thing here. And we wanted to make sure we had heat going in there. We had this fan going so that the fan would be blowing warm air, circulating it around through there, underneath, behind there, and out in here. You could feel the air coming back out again. So warm air to the fresh water tank. We never had any problems with anything freezing up like some people did. We had a space heater there, a little one that kept the heat going into the bathroom and this way towards the tub. Then we had a fan blowing in that hole now that it's not cold anymore, we'll put the panel back up on there and things will be normal again. We don't have to worry about the cold getting under there anymore. There's water hoses that come from under there that we can't get to. That's why we had this open and we had this propped up so he could get in there. So we had this propped up during the cold and this open. Those tubing, that, that water tubing goes underneath there and it goes underneath the sink. You can see it. It's very close to the outside wall there. We had to do things to keep those warm and that's why we had a space heater running into the bathroom and we left this cabinet door open. Some of our viewers we talked to said that they don't like leaving their cabinet doors open because then cold air comes out into the main living area. <laughs> we would rather put on an extra sweater or even a jacket if need be than to have frozen pipes. <laughs> How about you? One big mistake some people made is that the water spigot is way up here and this was not protected. That's, that's hard to do because it's right next to the electrical thing. That's part of the RV park um, is going to have to handle that. But, but what some people did is they left their filters or water filters hooked up. Look at the space between here to here and down here. And then if they had their heated water hose, which we don't have that, but if they had their heated water hose hooked up way down here, that's a lot of space to freeze up. And one of these exploded. Like we said in the other video, the city connection. Okay, again, if you have a heated water hose, this part isn't heated. And, and until you get to the part that is, it could maybe be, you know, this long. This part here is all open to whatever. If you're gonna have the city connection and you're gonna have the, if you have a heated water hose, you gotta have the whole thing heated, but then the part that's not, you gotta cover it somehow. You gotta, somehow you gotta protect the part that's, that's exposed. Easiest thing though was to just disconnect, even for those who had the inside compartments. Right. And, and so you fill it in here, in the potable water part, and, and then just completely disconnect that. If you're leery about filling your fresh water tank and you're afraid it's going to freeze, which somebody here in the park told us that they were in Iowa in the winter time once and friends of theirs had their freshwater tank filled and it froze into a block of ice. I would love to hear the rest of that story to find out how it is that that happened because it must mean they didn't have any heat or anything at all. So if that were the case, then you don't want to have a freshwater tank filled. 
but you will want to have water on hand somehow. So maybe filling up different containers, jars, bottles, whatever you need to do, have some jugs of water on hand so that you at least have water for washing up, cooking, and rinsing out your toilet. Another technique that has often failed, and we hear story after story about people doing this and they do it anyway, hmm. is dripping hot water down your drains. That may work in a house, but it doesn't usually work in an RV. If it has for you, that's great. But most people we've heard from that have done it have said it failed. What happens is if the power goes out or your hot water heater for whatever reason fails, you're going to have cold water going down your drains instead of the hot, and you're going to have blocks of ice in your water tubes. The other problem with that is that you have to leave your gray water tank open so that it doesn't free, fill up with water and freeze that way. There seems to be more issues with dripping water down your drains than success stories. <laughs> we don't recommend it. <laughs> in a future video, we're going to talk about how to conserve water, not just in your RV, but in your house house too. These are going to be tips that will help you either place, but we, we know how to conserve water. We have to conserve water often when we're traveling, so we're going to show you a video on that. Make sure you're subscribed so you get to see it. We're not going to go over and over and over all the things that we've already covered in other videos. I have a playlist on our channel that has, I think now this will be the 10th one, going into that playlist of how to keep warm during a freeze when you're living in an RV. I will put a link to the playlist at the end of this video and you can check it out. Recently, a new viewer watched one of our videos that we did almost two years ago on how to manage and prevent and maintain your RV from condensation. And she was sad because it had gotten so few views and she wondered why YouTube didn't promote it more. Well, here's the big thing. The main reason we don't get a lot of views on our videos is because we don't get comments. Comments and likes and shares is what's going to, that's what YouTube wants to see. They want to see interaction between us, the channel, and between our viewers and viewers between viewers. They want to see that kind of action and they don't see enough of that with our videos. If you like this video or if you know someone who could benefit from seeing it or any of our videos on how to stay warm in an RV, share the video, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up. That way we can be helping others too. So you're going to help us help others by doing such a simple thing. Please, thank you. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't yet. Ring that bell so you're notified every time new videos come up. Check out our Facebook page. I just posted a gluten-free chicken meal that is yummy. And yeah, even if you're not gluten-free. Oh, it'd be yummy even. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's on our Facebook page. Check that out. And until next time, have a happy new year. And God bless. God bless.